Good afternoon and welcome to today's event. I'm Michael Sakata, President and CEO of the Maryland Transportation Builders and Materials Association. And it's my honor to kick off to this important event. My organization represents all transportation workers, whether in the office or on the road. And I'm proud to be here today with our agency partners, both local and national. Thank you for attending today. It's been a difficult several weeks for our great state. But as Governor Moore has said many times, we are Maryland tough. It's not lost on me that Maryland has experienced two of the worst work zone crashes in our history. First, in March of 2023, just behind me on 695, and the second, just last month at the Key Bridge. And now we stand here today to kick off National Work Zone Awareness Week. Those tragic events serve as stoic reminders of the critical need for continued work zone awareness. I'd like to take a moment to thank the American Traffic Safety Services Association, or ATSA, and Federal Highway Administration, FHWA, who awarded us this opportunity to host today's event. I'd also like to recognize and thank our state federal partners, all the local, state, and federally elected officials here today, our industry partners, law enforcement agencies, the Maryland Department of Transportation, and its agencies and members of the Lieutenant Governor's Works on Safety Group who are all with us today. In addition to our presentation, you are in the right spot to view our commemorative Unity Ride, a convoy of up to 350 transportation vehicles in support of work zone safety. If we've timed it right, the procession will pass under the I-70 bridge at the conclusion of this event. We've also asked that you please be sure to stay in front of the orange barrels on the bridge deck. Before you have the opportunity to hear from our esteemed speakers, I ask you stand for the singing of the national anthem performed by someone who certainly knows work zones, Jolene Morris, who's an area engineer in construction for the Maryland Department of Transportation State Highway Administration. Take it away, Jolene. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight for the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star spangled banner yet wave oh the land of the free and the home of the Thank you, Jolene. Um, next up, we ask that uh, Paul Wiedefeld, the Secretary for the Maryland Department of Transportation, who oversees and leads six agencies, the State Highway Administration, Maryland Transit Administration, the Motor Vehicle Administration, Maryland Aviation Administration, Maryland Port Administration, and the Maryland Transportation Authority. Come on up, Paul. Thank you, Mike. Good afternoon. Uh, thank you all for being here today, and especially Lieutenant Governor Miller for her leadership and support in enhancing safety in our work zones. I'm proud of the work accomplished by the Maryland Work Zone Safety Work Group 
which was formed by Governor Moore and led by Lieutenant Governor Miller. Working with industry partners, citizens, and transportation experts, including members from our State Highway Administration and Motor Vehicle Administration, this group made recommendations that will make a difference in driving behavior and, layer, and add layers of protection for our workers. But our work must continue to improve and evolve. When we first started planning this event months ago, the tragic loss of six of our colleagues on this beltway beneath us was a fresh wound for all of us. Sadly, the tragedies have not stopped. In December, we lost a contractor trimming trees along the Capitol Beltway. And in Wacomico County, a highway worker died after being struck by a vehicle in a work zone last month. And three weeks ago, we lost six Marylanders who were working on the key bridge when it collapsed after being struck by a cargo strip. Each incident is unique, but they all remind us of the challenges men and women face every day as they work to improve our highway system. At this time, I'd like to pause for a moment of silence to remember each of our transportation colleagues' loss since March of 2023. Thank you. As you know, this location highlights the importance of work zone safety. Below us is an ongoing project that enhances Maryland's transportation system. It's also where we lost six members of our transportation family. Our goal is to build and maintain a safe, efficient, and equitable transportation system that serves all users. To do that, our dedicated highway professionals must work so alongside traffic, often traveling at high speeds. We must work together to provide them with the respect and protection they deserve. Almost every day, we see crashes and near misses on our highway work zones. Between 2018 and 2022, there were nearly 7,200 work zone crashes in Maryland. That's nearly 1,500 each year. 44 people were killed in these crashes and more than 2,700 were injured. Many of these were highway workers, but many others were drivers and their passengers. We will continue to innovate, collaborate, and explore new practices and technologies to advance safety. Yet we know the greatest impact must come from the driver's behavior. We must educate, advocate, and raise awareness of our shared responsibility to first slow down, avoid distractions, never drive impaired, and always wear a seatbelt and move over in work zones when you can. The theme of today's message <clears throat> is, is we must share. Work zones are temporary. Your actions behind the wheel can last forever. Now it's my honor to invite the Federal Highway Administration Associate Administrator for Operations, Martin Kunop, to the podium for share a few words. Thank you. Thank you, Secretary, and hello. On behalf of the U.S. Department of Transportation, Secretary Pete Buttigieg, and Federal Highway Associate Administration Administrator Shaylin Batt, I'd like to thank the Maryland Department of Transportation for organizing this year's National Work Zone Awareness Week kickoff event. I'd also like to thank the tremendous partners of this unified commitment to the topic of work zone safety the American Traffic Safety Services Association, the American Association of State Highway and Transportation Officials, the American Road and Transportation Builders Association, and everyone who played a role in this year's event in the 2024 National Work Zone Awareness Week. I also want to give a shout out to our local Federal Highway Administration colleagues in the Maryland Division led by Division Administrator Valeria Remazova, and also here helping to honor this occasion is Breck Jeffers, the Division Safety and Operations Specialist, Sade Wint, the Financial Manager, and uh, Jawad Paracha from my office. So uh, we are here in numbers because this is very important to us. The recent collapse of the Francis Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore, as well as the crash in the work zone uh, last year near here, resulting in the loss of such precious, valuable people 
from our community. These tragic reminders that highway construction workers are the unsung heroes of our transportation system. The lives of these workers were abruptly cut short and our hearts go out to their families and loved ones. Construction workers on our, construction workers on our roads, highways, and bridges face some of the toughest working conditions that many of us take for granted. They work outside in all kinds of weather with oncoming traffic. I don't know how many of us can say that we have the amount of traffic whizzing right by us in our work environments, and they do, and there's numerous hazards. One of those hazard hazards that and you heard the secretary mention that is speed, the speed that traffic is moving near these workplaces. Speeds play a significant role in work zone crash related fatalities. To address this, the use of safer speeds is a key part of the US Department of Transportation's National Roadway Safety Strategy. I also want to recognize the state of Maryland's elected and appointed leaders and their career staff that enabled and utilized speed safety cameras for use in many of work, Maryland's work zones as one example of applying uh, one of the many proven safety countermeasures that exist that we know make a difference to protect workers as well as the traveling public that navigate these challenging locations where road improvements are being made and they're being made for all of our behalf. We owe the nation's highway construction workers a huge debt of gratitude for helping to maintain and improve the transportation network that millions of Americans rely on every day. We can and must take every opportunity to remind the traveling public of the need to be careful when traveling through the work zones. And we are part of the traveling public. We are no different than those that we are asking to be mindful of. And so as construction season ramps up this year, we hope drivers will slow down, stay alert and undistracted and help protect the people who work to build and maintain our roadways. In closing, the Federal Highway Administration is proud to participate in this year's kickoff event and join others around the country that are committed to improving safety for those in work zones and all other road users, not just during the National Work Zone Awareness Week, but throughout the year. And while safety may not be part of my job title, it is 100% fully in my mission and my responsibilities, and I hope everyone can say the same. So please buckle up, put your phones down, and remember that lives, your lives, the lives of our community members and, and construction workers are far more valuable and precious than a few minutes that might be saved by trying to get there faster than what the posted safe speed limit is. And that lives are nowhere near as valuable as a text or an email. That can wait. So I hope you all go and do great things and thank you for having us here. Thank you. Thank you, Federal Highway, and thank you, Administrator Knopp. Our next speaker is responsible for leading a team of nearly 3,000 transportation professionals across 26 offices, 28 maintenance shops, which own and operate more than 17,000 lane miles of non-tolled roads and more than 2,500 bridges across Maryland. I introduce you to State Highway Administrator Will Pines. Well, thank you, Mike, and good afternoon, everyone. I wanna start by thanking the American Traffic Safety Services Association for choosing Maryland to host this year's observance of the National Work Zone Awareness Week. It is truly an honor. And I also wanna thank all of the partners who have joined us here today for helping us to make Maryland safer. Work zone safety is personal to me, and I think it's personal to everyone here today. In our careers, we have seen far too many tragedies 
and lost too many around this state. Today, we are overlooking the site where six crew members working on a project to improve the Baltimore Beltway lost their lives last year. They were doing their jobs, serving their community, and working to make Maryland better and have a better transportation system. Highway work is dangerous, whether it's along one of our busiest corridors or on a rural back road. We honor all those who lost and were lost here in Maryland and across this nation. We must do more and continue to foster a culture of safety in the transportation industry. Every day, there are about 300 active work zones in Maryland. Whether it's a long-term construction project or a temporary litter or mowing pickup, we know that all of our work zones are incredibly dangerous. The State Highway Administration constantly strives to improve safety for our roadway workers, but also the traveling public. We've already implemented several of the measures recommended by the Maryland Work Zone Safety Group that was chaired by our amazing Lieutenant Governor Miller. We're closing additional lanes in some work zones to add more buffer between our crews and traffic. We're working closely with our partners at the Maryland State Police to increase speed enforcement in our work zones. And we applaud the work of our legislators to embrace the recommendations from the work zone work group during the recent General Assembly. We can improve work zones and innovate methods and technologies to protect our workers. We can and we must. We must enlist and inspire the public to embrace their role, the responsibility they share with us to make our work zones safe. Our work zones are filled with mothers, fathers, sisters, brothers, close friends, and dear neighbors. They are building a better, safer, world-class highway system and providing access and opportunity to every single user. The highway is their office. Protecting them must be a priority for us all. I believe Maryland can be a national model in protecting workers and work zones and the traveling public. When that goal is achieved, we will have truly honored the men and women we remember here today. Thank you. Now I'd like to introduce Robert Lewis and Stephen Cook, two members of our maintenance team who can share their firsthand experience of what it's like working just a few feet from vehicles traveling at highway speeds. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm Robert Lewis with uh, MDI State Highway, team leader. Beside me is my employee, Stephen Cook. We were on the road every day whether it's fixing potholes, repairing highway signs, installing guardrail, picking up litter, and pretty soon mowing grass. Our job keeps the road safe for drivers. Today, we are asking drivers to keep the road safe for us. Last year, February 28, 2023, my crew and I were cleaning up US 15 in Frederick County, removing litter from the shoulders. We had our high visibility vest on Trucks had flashing lights and our attenuator, some people call it a crash cushion. We were over on the right shoulder. We did everything right, and yet we almost lost our lives. Around 4.30 that afternoon, we moved to a new stretch of road just a little feet up. I got out of my truck, and the next thing I see is car parts flying through the air. I ducked and jumped over the guardrail when I turned around, the bed of a dump truck was within six inches from my head. Our work zone had been hit by a dump truck hauling a trailer. The impact destroyed our vehicles and shoved them forward multiple feet down the road. I quickly took a head count. You can't imagine my relief when I realized everyone on my team was okay. They all had to run 
and the wooded area for cover. I had, had this crash happened 30 seconds or a minute earlier, the outcome would have been very different. At the end of the day, the driver that hit our work zone didn't face any criminal or serious charges, just a minor traffic citation for his license. We were lucky that day. I got to go home to my kids and my wife. I wish I could stand here and say this kind of danger is rare, but it's not. In fact, I could spend the next hour telling you story after story of all the close calls that we've experienced, especially just in the last year since our work zone crash. It can't be said enough. Pay attention when you're driving. Work zones are everywhere, every day. When you see one, slow down and move over. It's the law. And it's my life and my crew member's life on the line. Thank you. Now, <clears throat> I'd like to thank you for all that you've done. And now I'd like to introduce one of my friends and colleagues, MDTA Executive Director, Bruce Gardner. Bruce is here because he too experienced an unspeakable tragedy on the morning of March 26. He lost six crew members in a work zone on the Key Bridge. Bruce. Thank you, Will. Before I start, I'd like to also point out that I'm joined by uh, Major Ronce Alford with the MDTA police, who is uh, heavily involved in the work zone uh, safety committee, even though I only started uh, back at the authority a couple months ago. He has been part of this project um, the entire time. So thank you for being here, Major. This week serves as a poignant reminder to the important importance of protecting our workers on the front lines and all of us who traverse these zones. Thank you, Robert, for those great words, because um, it's not only about the lives that we lost, but it's about the workers that continue to be out there and experience these events and still keep coming back to serve our community. Our work in transportation and infra infrastructure is paramount to the progress and safety our, of our communities. Serving Marylanders with various transportation projects for over 30 decades, myself, it's been a profound honor, but sometimes a sobering task. It has taught me the importance of diligence, safety, and the unpredictable nature of the work. This week, despite the beautiful weather today, brings together us together under a somber cloud. It reminds us of the undeniable risks of our workers face every day and the irreversible impact of a tragedy. As Will indicated, and as, all you, as you all know, we have had to mourn the loss of six individuals, six vital members of our community whose absence has left a permanent mark on their families and on all of us. But we also need to remember the two other individuals who survived the Key Bridge collapse and the police who witnessed that event firsthand. The Key Bridge collapse has painfully reiterated the message that the National Work Zone Safety Awareness Day brings. I would like to extend my deepest gratitude to the elected and appointed officials who have continuously supported and funded safety initiatives, enabling us to strive for safer work environments and to implement the necessary precautions that can save lives. We want to recognize and honor the families who have lost their loved ones and the workers who, whose lives have been changed by these events. Their strength and courage in the face of such law, loss is nothing short of heroic. Please know that your loved ones' memories fuel our commitment to safety and drive us to prevent tragedies in the future. To the public, I implore you to remember, as my colleagues have, that you play a vital role in ensuring the safety of our workers and other drivers on the roadway. As you drive through work zones, I urge you to stay vigilant, vigilant, slow down, and move over when possible. These simple actions can make a significant difference in safeguarding the lives of those who work tirelessly to improve our roadways. In closing, National Work Zone Safety Awareness Week is not just about recognizing the hazards present in work zones, it's also about taking collective action to mitigate these risks. Together, we support, with the support of our officials and the resilience of the affected families and the cooperation of those who travel our highways, tunnels, and bridges, 
we can create that safer environment that we all need and desire. Thank you. Thank you, Bruce. Um, commendable effort for somebody for just being on the job for a few months. So we all thank you for what you've had endured and appreciate your comments. I'd like to now uh, welcome um, a gentleman who has had more than 30 years of experience in law enforcement, including as chief of Maryland State Police Field Operations Bureau, where he led a patrol force of more than 1,000 troopers and investigative personnel assigned to 23 barracks. Superintendent of the Maryland Department of State Police, Colonel Roland Butler, Jr. Mike, thank you so much. Good afternoon, everyone here. Lieutenant Governor Miller, members of the dais. I'd just like to say thank you for your efforts to make the roadways safer for everyone, particularly the workers that go out there and make a difference in our travels every single day. Work Zone Awareness Week serves as an annual reminder of the importance of safety on our roadways, particularly within our work zones. The risks are heightened in work zones. Never has it been more apparent in Maryland, where a little over a year, six dedicated workers, not far from here, tragically lost their lives. Those individuals, like thousands of others across Maryland and across the country, work tirelessly to repair our roads, improve our infrastructure, and ensure the constant flow of traffic. These workers bravely do their jobs while working under hazardous conditions. We can hear the, some of the things that they listen to while they're out there working diligently. What we haven't heard yet is the screeching of tires. We heard about that a little earlier from one of the speakers. Everything can change in a moment for them. These workers do everything they can to ensure that they return to their loved ones at the end of the day. But tragically, as we have learned in Maryland, that's not always the case. Consider the following. From 2018 to 2022, Maryland recorded almost 7,200 work zone crashes, injuring close to 3,100 people. 44 of those people lost their lives. As we gather here today, we must highlight that many of these crashes, injuries, and deaths were not inevitable. They were preventable. The most common causes of work zone related crashes are distracted driving, following a vehicle too closely, and speeding. All things that motorists have control over. All things that motorists have control over. Work Zone Awareness Week offers a platform to stress road safety to remind motorists to exercise caution, drive safely, remember motor vehicle laws, and to think about those out there in harm's way. The Maryland State Police is fully committed to providing safety to all who travel on our roadways in the state of Maryland, whether it's our Traffic Enforcement Unit, TEMS, or it's our DUI Enforcement Unit, SPIDER. We're committing 100% to change the behavior of those motorists who ignore our traffic laws. Changing driving behaviors and preventing crashes, particularly in work zones, is paramount to ensuring the safety of our highway workers and our motorists. Along with our allied agencies throughout the state, we are continue to enforce the traffic laws, educating the public, and promoting awareness every day in our ongoing effort to save lives. In the years since the tragedy on I-695, Maryland State Police have conducted more than 460 work zone enforcement initiatives, led to troopers issuing over 14,000 warnings and citations, and recording approximately 100 DUI arrests. The safety of those workers does not fall on law enforcement alone. All of us can do our part. All of us can do our part by driving safely, taking our time, and considering the peril that others are in. This starts with paying attention, putting down the phone, maintaining safe distances between vehicles, following the posted speed limit, especially when speed limits are reduced within work zones. During this National Work Zone Awareness Week, let us push towards the ultimate goal of zero fatalities on our roadways. 
Let's make sure to honor the memory of those lost in work zone crashes by proactively working together to eliminate future tragedies. Together, we can make a difference. Together, we can make sure every worker gets home safely after their job is done. Thank you. And I'd like to introduce the Motor Vehicle Administrator, Chrissy Neiser. Good afternoon and thank you, Colonel Butler. Thank you for what you and all the troopers as well as all of our law enforcement colleagues across the state and at the local level do to support not only all of us, but most importantly today, all of our road construction workers with the risks that they take each and every day. I know that everybody gathered here really has the same goal and that's to eliminate the unnecessary traffic fatalities and serious injuries that result from motor vehicle crashes especially when it comes to work zones. Again, I wanna emphasize that point. These are crashes, not accidents. These unnecessary crashes are a direct result from bad choices that drivers made or failed to make either before they get behind the wheel or while they're driving. And that leads to death or injury of a fellow road user. Last year, these poor choices made by drivers led to us losing over 610 individuals on Maryland roadways. These are behaviors that exactly the driver behavior subcommittee was focused on for the governor's work zone work group. And I'd like to thank all the members of the work group who really contributed tremendously to the recommendations and what's already been implemented. Our focus and the behavior subcommittee was to change the behavior of drivers, to really get through to everyone that we all have a personal responsibility to drive safely each and every time we get behind the wheel. Our group developed several recommendations on education, public marketing, driver notifications, as well as enforcement efforts. Some of those have already been implemented, including updating Maryland's driver manual that teaches new drivers, developing new materials to educate Marylanders about the flashing green lights that you see in construction zones, and supporting the legislation that was already referenced that we're very proud to see in Maryland to increase automated speed enforcement fines. Something we're excited to launch today is a new high profile leaders outreach campaign. We've enlisted the help of current and retired athletes, including Baltimore Oriole catcher Adley Rushman, as well as Orioles legend Cal Ripken and retired Baltimore Raven Tori Smith. We'll continue to launch additional PSAs with high profile leaders. We're proud to have the support of our high level governor, government officials, and that includes Governor Moore and Lieutenant Governor Miller. They will be spreading the message throughout the state about the importance of driving safely in work zones. You'll also be seeing billboards and digital public service announcements about the importance of moving over, slowing down, and paying attention to work zones. This is always just a reminder that one driver's actions behind the wheel can have a profound impact on the lives of others. Lives can be forever altered in just that one moment. There have been 106 days so far this year, but there have only been 39 days without a fatality on our roadway. In those 106 days, 138 people have died in motor vehicle crashes. 138 people. So empty seats at the table. People are there, not, not there for holidays, not there every day. Families that are devastated forever. Our goal is zero crashes, zero injuries, and zero deaths on Maryland roadways. That's the only acceptable outcome for all of us. We know that it'll take each and every one of us to reach that goal. And if we start by better protecting our road construction workers, we're also protecting someone's parents, someone's child, someone's sibling, and someone's friend. So in your next drive home, I'd ask that all Marylanders, please slow down. Please buckle up and stay alert. Together, we can create that new culture of courtesy that our driver behavior subcommittee talked about. It's now my honor to introduce our next speaker who has been a true champion in highway safety. She chaired the work zone work group for the past year. And I know we're all grateful to have a traffic engineer in the seat of the Lieutenant Governor's office. Please join me in welcoming Lieutenant Governor Miller. Good afternoon, everyone. 
I, I was told that I better project loudly because of all the noises behind us, so I hope you don't mind that. First off, I want to say, Jolene, thank you for that amazing rendition of our national anthem. You are proving that engineers have a lot of talents that people don't talk about, so thank you for that. Laura, thank you for your ASL services. Truly appreciate that. And thank you for every one of you that is here today. I know you're all safety leaders. Thank you to the many organizers who made the 2024 National Work Zone Awareness Week possible. Marilyn is proud to have the opportunity to host this significant safety event. My sincere gratitude to the speakers who share their remarks and who are at the forefront of safety each and every single day. Your words speak of our shared mission that work zones are temporary, but actions behind the wheel ca uh, can last forever. Work zone safety is not just a statistic or a campaign slogan. It starts with you, me, and everyone in between. As you heard earlier, on March 22nd, 2023, tragedy struck our community with the devastating work zone crash that claimed the lives of six transportation workers. This was the deadliest work zone crash in Maryland history. It occurred at the construction site beneath the very highway where we stand today. Since then, we've lost two more lives in work zone crashes. And almost a year later, on March 26, 2024, the world woke up to watch in disbelief as iconic Francis Scott Key Bridge plunged into the river in a matter of seconds, tragically ending the lives of six transportation workers yet again. Behind every work zone tragedy, there are families shattered, futures altered, dreams forever changed. Please continue to keep these families in your thoughts and in your prayers. We know that the toll of work zone crashes extends beyond highway construction workers. Since the beginning of last year, six drivers and passengers have also been killed as a result of work zone crashes. This is a task, this is a stark reminder that the risk with work zones impact all who pass by them. In the aftermath of the tragic March 2023 695 crash, Governor Moore form, uh, uh, formed the Maryland's Work Zone Safety Work Group that I chaired. And I want to extend my deepest gratitude for the tireless work and expertise that was provided by so many individuals who served on this group, including transportation experts such as our charming master of ceremonies, Mike Sakata, and also our federal leaders, including Martin, our amazing MDOT team with Secretary Wiedefell, Administrator Pines, Administrative Neiser, and Deputy Administrator Seuss, who is not here today. Law enforcement officers, thank you, Colonel Butler, to uh, Director Gardner and Major Alford. Thank you so much for the role that you played and for the brave men and women who keep us safe. Our labor partners, contractors, elected leaders, some of whom who have joined us today, including Senator Hedelman, Delegates Ruth and Ziegler, and Councilman Young. The very people who work at highway construction zones, like the stories that you heard from Robert and Stephen. Thank you for sharing those stories. Governor Moore and I believe those closest to the challenge are closest to the solution, which is why our construction workers were part of this team in coming up with recommendations. The work group convened 19 times, crafting a holistic strategy focused on changing driver behavior. This has happened before when we had seat belts. When it was first introduced, seat belts to the nation, hardly anybody was wasn't compliant of it. But after great education, engineering, and enforcement, it's 90% in compliance today. And we can do the same with work zone safety. 
the education to educate drivers, MDOT has invested in an aggressive public safety awareness campaign that you heard from Administrative Nizer. MDOT is also deploying innovating engineering solutions to minimize direct interaction between road workers and motorists. Finally, measures to strengthen enforcement include the passage of the bipartisan bill, the Maryland Road Worker Protection Act. Governor Moore signed the bill into law on Tuesday, April 9th. The new law modernizes outdated restrictions and provides greater flexibility for the installation of automated speed cameras. It also increases fines for reckless drivers. The revenue generated from the fines will be reinvested into public awareness campaigns and for the purchase of new technology and safety equipment to protect our roadway workers in work zones. Another bipartisan bill that Governor Moore signed into law on April 9th is to honor our fallen transportation workers. The Maryland Protection, Protecting Opportunities and Regional Trade, also known as the Port Act, in addition to supporting workers and businesses affected by the collapse of the Francis Scott Key Bridge, it creates a new permanent scholarship program for families of Maryland transportation workers who lose their life in the job. These new laws are important tools to protect and honor the men and women who build and maintain our transportation infrastructure, the ones who place themselves in harm's way every day. But these laws alone will not do the job on their own. Every one of us has a part in ensuring the safety and well-being of one another. To underscore this, Governor Moore has proclaimed April 15th through the 19th as Work Zone Awareness Week in Maryland. Governor Moore and I are committed to ensuring safety of all Marylanders. We call upon every citizen to do their part to keep each other safe too. So buckle up, obey traffic laws, avoid distractions, reduce speeds at construction work zones, put on your seatbelt, do not drive impaired, and observe move over laws. The lives of our highway workers and countless other lives depend on you, me, and everyone in between. Thank you. I want to thank uh, Lieutenant Governor for the the proclamation that she mentioned. She sure. works on Awareness Week, April fifteenth and nineteenth. Thank you. Sure. Um, I appreciate it. Sure. Yeah. Sure. True partnership. Um, the transportation construction industry builds and maintains. Um, our highways, our bridges, our trains, um, our buses. And, you know, one thing has taught me my career is, is that they respond. They respond with our partners. They respond with the people around the room, the legislative officials. So um, as, as sad as the March 22nd uh, crash was, we work with our partners. We were able to get HB 513 passed, which is the strongest measure in the nation and will lead as a uh, barometer for other states. So thank you for that and thank you for the implementation, these partners here today. Um, behind us, by the way, is the Unity Ride. Okay, we get a chance to take a look at that. Please stay on this side of the orange barrels. And thank you all of our speakers today who have committed to saving lives on our roadways. This concludes our formal remarks. Um, our speakers will now be available for interview at the end of the bridge here. Uh, Paul Milton will, uh, will, will meet you. Uh, please stay a few minutes to check out the Unity Ride as they pass beneath us. And we also um, make sure, stay in front of the orange, bone, orange cone. So thank you very much. Um, we also ask that guests return their vehicles and follow directions from our parking crew so that everyone remains safe and we can swiftly reopen the lanes to motorists. Thank you again.